Right, so, remember these are specific properties of the transition element. So, property number one is they form coloured volumes. And you need to know a few colours of these. Um, uh, four colour lines with partially filled D orbitals. It's because they've got partially filled D orbitals, that's what means, that's what gives them this, these colours. Um, so, EG, Fe2+, plus, can anybody remember what that colour is? Green, pink. Uh, green. What about Fe3 plus? Yellow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what about copper blue. two plus? Yeah, copper two plus is blue. That's a relief. What about you probably about cobalt two plus? Uh, is actually pink. Can we even put these in frames or something? Sorry? Are we going to do this again over the Bunsen burner? Uh, yeah, next yes, week, what I'll do is when we're going to do uh, transition metal precipitation reactions, we'll, uh, we'll look at some of these colours. Next week? Next week, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When we're over the signs. We can't just see. Yeah. Well, I thought we had like control assessment practice. Uh, well, I need, I need to get everybody in the same room at the same time, which mm -hmm. I'm struggling with at the moment because we haven't got. Yeah. How long do they, does it, will we do it over a two week period? Yeah, yeah, I'll give you, we'll, we'll talk about it, I'll give you notice and then we'll do it, yeah. Uh, right, can I just, whoa, 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 sitting on there. Can I just do one more, copper plus? Colourless. Colourless, brilliant. Now, why is this colourless? If you look at the, because you may think, whoa, that's mad. Because you just told me they they form coloured eyes. Well, well, copper is a transition metal, but copper plus doesn't have partially filled D orbitals. If I do the electronic configuration of copper plus, it's going to be argon 3D10. And that's why he hasn't got a partially filled D subshell. Right. Next one, a precipitation reaction. So, these again you've done at GCSE, and we will show you, I'll show you these. Um, so, they react, well, okay. the transition metal the transition metal element, um, ions <coughs> in aqueous solution react with sodium hydroxide solution to form uh, gelatinous precipitates. I don't know if you've heard of that. They're like jelly-like. Well, when we when we show them next week. Uh, your kind of see what I mean. Uh, so uh, let's uh, do. You need to know four. So copper two plus aqueous. These are going to be ionic equations. Yeah. Living on the edge is going to be is going to meet two hydroxide ions in solution to give me CuOH2 solid. That is a blue precipitate. So you need to know the equations and the colour it goes. Uh, the next one, Fe2 plus aqueous plus two hydroxide ions gives me only a two hydroxide solid. That is a <coughs> green precipitate.
We've also got FD3 plus aqueous. Now we're going to add three hydroxide ions because it's three plus. To give me iron three hydroxide. Um, that is like a rusty colour. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And the final one, this one is a little bit confusing. Um, this is cobalt 2 plus aqueous plus 2 hydroxide ions. That gives me cobalt 2 hydroxide. Um, but the colour is a little bit weird. It's blue. but goes a pink colour if you let it stand. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what you have to bring to it. Yeah, yeah, it's not to do with that, but goes pink on standing. So initially it's blue, and then if you leave it um, hanging around, it will go uh, pink. That will be the final colour. <laughs> so transistor metals you know can act as catalysts because you've learned them in, you know, uh, AS. But why? There's two ways they can act. The first way is because they've got these partially filled diodes, they can form variable oxidation states. So you know we talked about copper plus, copper two plus, iron two plus, iron three plus. So let's say I am copper two plus. Okay. So... If I give the balloon to you, uh, Steph. So, Steph and Hannah want to react together, okay? But they don't like each other, which is yeah. great. So, Steph's electron has to get to ha Hannah without them actually meeting. If I am copper 2 plus, I don't mind being copper plus. I can happily become copper plus. So if I come along and I go, well, I'll take that electron off of your hands for a minute, I become copper plus for a short time. And then I just move it off and I then give that electron to Hannah. Steph and Hannah haven't met. I've transferred that electron. I'm not bothered. I've just gone from copper 2 plus to copper plus, And then I transfer and I become copper 2 plus. So I am at the end of the reaction unchanged. I'm a catalyst. I haven't changed at all. All I've done is I've just helped the electron transfer, and that's because of the variable oxidation step idea. So transition elements. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Are good catalysts. I won't do it ever. Ever. I promise. For two reasons. The first reason is because they've got this variable oxidation state. They're not too bothered about which of their various oxidation states they can go. So they can help. transfer electrons between reactors. And at the end of it, they won't change. So they just carry on swapping the electrons back and forth. There they are. And an example um, of that is actually in the contact process. So you have vanadium 2, so EG, B2O5 in the contact process, which we use to make sulfuric acid, which is used to make, again, sulfur dioxide plus a half <coughs> of two sulfur trioxide. Okay, the other, the other reason is that, well, you know, we talked about the harbour process, that the gas molecules are quite happy to sit on the iron. They can form, like, weak bonds between the iron. So, um, reactive molecules 
But take your gas mode, because I'm going to put gas mode here. Yeah. Can be held. Oh my god, I'm such an idiot. Oh. Um, oh. Can be held on the surface of the transition animal. Is that like in cock? Sorry? Um, so, uh, the transition element is a solid, it is the actual element, so e.g. iron, um, uh, so their bonds are weak. Add and absorption. So, e.g. is going to be iron in the Hazel process, which you all know and love, is N2 gas plus H2 gas, making ammonia gas. Like so. Um, and we talked about a little bit about iron, you've got the iron surface like that, um, and iron forms weak bonds with nitrogen, so along comes nitrogen, and then hydrogen <coughs> as well forms a weak bond. Because it forms a weak bond with iron, it weakens the bond between the two atoms. And then because they're also in the same place. So did we talk about it, it's like the barman at the bar? No, it's not it. So it's like um, if you go to a bar, you know like um, you like hang around at the bar. No, I so you kind of like have a, you have like the barman to talk to you. Um, because he's supplying you, no, that's your friend that you're sat next to. But you can kind of, you're next to the other person that you may be fancy. It's like, a nice, it's like a nice meeting point for you to get together, so it gives you the good opportunity to ditch your friend, which you're all going to do, aren't you? And you then go off with someone else. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs>